Hello and welcome to this new episode of Not So Fast. Um, in this episode, I'm going to discuss something which is not usual uh, for this channel, which is to discuss a little bit uh, nutrition, but of course, discussing it from the point of view of physics. Um, so I'm going to discuss um, the SICO uh, paradigm or doctrine uh, and its relationship uh, with the first law of thermodynamics or alleged relationship with the first law of thermodynamics. So let's see uh, a bit what the context is. So um, CICO is an acronym uh, for CICO, uh, which basically means calories in, calories out. Okay, uh, It's supposed to be a sort of recipe to, um, um, uh, to achieve various weight and fitness goals. Um, now, uh, if I want to explain what it is, let's uh, you know the the uh, expert talk um, and so here this is taken from uh, a website precision nutrition I will put all the links by the way in the description below and it says that CICO is basically when you take in more energy than you burn you gain weight when you take in less energy than you burn you lose weight okay um, now they um, expand a bit on this and in fact I think that that's great because it allows me to um, use the almost most uh, charitable, to be honest, interpretation of, of CICO I've ever seen, uh, which is the following from, again, the same source. Uh, so that's an energy balance uh, equation, uh, which said that you've got energy in minus energy out, um, and it, it equal, apparently, changes in body stores. Um, so there is a little bit of... Uh, small print here, uh, I'm not sure if you will be able to read, but basically it says that body stores here are going to refer to all the tissues available for breakdown. Um, fat, muscle, organ, uh, bone, uh, that, that's how it works. Uh, interestingly though, uh, water is not part of this equation, uh, so it's basically uh, singled out uh, for whatever reason, because it's kind of confusing. Um, but le let's at least agree that this is uh, a very charitable interpretation. Most actually uh, MDs and fitness uh, people are going simply to put on the right hand side of this equation simply fat stores instead of uh, something much more permissive, which is fat, muscle, organ, and so on. Um, right, so, so that's basically the idea. Now, what uh, then would be my contention with this? Well, my contention is not with CICO per se. Uh, there are plenty of uh, people who, who do a great job um, uh, essentially uh, disagreeing with, um, uh, with SICO and providing rationals for it. Uh, so there is a channel of, a very fine channel indeed of Bart K uh, that you, the people can watch uh, and various other uh, uh, nutritionists uh, as well. Who, um, who have disagreed with this view. Now, my contention has to do with the fact that uh, people argue that you actually can't uh, argue against CICO uh, because uh, it's actually a rehash or restatement of the first law of thermodynamics, and therefore uh, you, you can't debate it. Okay, So there is no discussion, um, and that's it. Um, and I think that's uh, a big issue. Now, to be fair, what is written there, uh, that uh, energy passes as work, heat, with matter, blah, blah, blah. Um, yes, fair enough. Uh, but let's see whether this is actually, this has anything to do with SICO itself. Um, so um, before that, let, let's also look that, you know, this is something which is really advocated very strongly. So for example, here, there is uh, on the left this uh, tweet by a medical doctor uh, stating that calories out in and calories out is a treism um, and is derived from the first law of thermodynamics. On the right hand side, there are even t shirts uh, where you can uh, you know, be a proponent uh, of SICO and be happy about the fact that it's not a diet uh, but it's the thermodynamics, apparently. Um, so so I, I'm really trying to take issue with these aspects, uh, connecting it somehow as some uh, inevitable uh, consequence of, of the first law without anything else. Okay, um, so um, first, what is the first law of thermodynamics uh, for a closed system? So a closed system uh, is, is rigorously defined uh, in thermodynamics. 
Uh, sometimes it is conflated with isolated system, uh, but a closed system is a system um, if you have only a single uh, component or substance, if you will, in your system, then the closed system means that the mass of that substance is not going to change. Okay, um, if you have different kinds of substances um, which can kind of transform one into the other and, and stuff like that, then what it means is that the composition um, of that system is going to be unchanged. Okay, so you need not only to conserve the total mass, but you need to conserve the mass of every single species uh, inside or substance inside your system. Okay, so that's what a closed system is. Now, what the first law of thermodynamics states, which is basically something which reads as an equation, which is delta u is equal to w plus q, um, and I'm ob obviously going to tell you what these terms are. So delta u here is the change in internal energy. So there is a notion in thermodynamics of internal energy, uh, which is some kind of, well, as the name kind of indicates, that the energy within a, a thermodynamic system, but the notion accounts for um, things and, well, concepts, if you will, which uh, would have no parallel concept or, or analogous concept in, let's say, normal mechanics, for example. Um, so basically, that's the internal energy uh, of the system. Okay. Um, so then um, W is the work which is being received uh, by the system. Okay. Uh, so often people would put a minus W. It's not a big deal. It's just that then in that case, W is the work done by the system. Here is plus W, so it's the work received by the system. And then plus Q, uh, which is the uh, heat being received uh, by the system. Okay. So that's uh, essentially in a nutshell, the first law uh, of thermodynamics. Okay, now um, is the human uh, body um, a closed system, so where the composition uh, doesn't change at all? Uh, no, it's not. At the very least, we can tell it's not just for the simple reason that it's, cont it's in contact with the um, air outside. There is nothing preventing anything from living in some sense. We're also breathing and so on. So clearly, uh, this is not a closed system. Now, does that mean that the first law of thermodynamics cannot apply? Um, actually, no. It means that the first, the original, if you will, first law uh, of thermodynamics, which was expressed for closed system, indeed does not apply. However, uh, it does apply when it comes to uh, the extension of the first law uh, of thermodynamics for open systems. Uh, and for open system is just, uh, well, more and in fact extremely more complicated because you need to add uh, some terms which you see on the right here, which is a discrete sum uh, over basically all possible species uh, which already exist in the system you're looking at and that may be exchanged with the outside uh, of that system. Um, and so um, the reason why I say it's complicated is because this term is called the chemical potential of the chemical species um, I, okay? And here in principle, because you, we are in contact with basically anything, uh, these chemical species can be essentially um, anything. At least nothing prevents in the first law of thermodynamics for this uh, species to be uh, anything. Um, and so uh, as a result, this is, these terms are incredibly uh, complicated to evaluate if you were to try any kind of quantitative estimate uh, of it. Um, so, uh, so basically that, that's kind of the idea. Now, of course, people might be happy with this term here, with the open system uh, term, because it allows for this concept of uh, body, like increase in body stores, uh, which we had earlier in the, in the uh, definition. Uh, now, the problem is that, yes, that's true. It may allow for this. But the problem is that this is incredibly more permissive than this, and that's what I would like to uh, to to put uh, to, you know to point out. So, uh, why is that the case? So, let's look at three different scenarios. So that's what I'm uh, I'm going to do now. I'm going to say, well, look, if we claim that the that the first law of thermodynamics is actually implying um, Seiko then in principle it should be impossible to find any scenario 
which is compatible uh, with the first law of thermodynamics, okay? But then that, that's not equivalent to CK, okay? Uh, if we can find any such scenarios, it means that it's not the case that the first law of thermodynamics implies CK, okay? Uh, because that's, w that's, a wor that's what the word implication means. It means that you can't get the first law to be true and then CK to be false. Okay, and let's see how that goes. So I've got three examples to provide. Uh, the first one is simply uh, imagining a, a human being stepping inside a microwave, okay, oven, like a, gi a gi gigantic one, okay? So uh, you've got a room, and this is uh, a cavity, basically, sending microwaves uh, to a human. Um, and then what's going to happen, and in fact, uh, I, I guess that's a good opportunity to specify something which Many people, including myself in my youth, uh, was uh, com you know, confused about is that actually a microwave oven works by providing work uh, to the system. It's, uh, um, it, it's increasing the temperature off, okay? Uh, it's providing work. It's not providing heat. Um, so uh, here, W is going to be the work that is received from the microwave radiation. Um, and then delta U, uh, in that case, uh, is going to be uh, increasing if you, know, you receive work, and this is positive work coming from an electromagnetic wave, then the internal energy is going to increase. In this specific case, because we kind of know how it works, it is kind of no ambiguity that you're going to get simply a temperature increase. And that's just what's going to happen. Uh, as you can see, there is more energy in than energy out. Uh, and the only thing we, that's going to happen is that the temperature of the body is going to increase. That's it. Like nothing else, uh, nothing more. And I'm not even quite trying to play with words. Like this is what the first law uh, of thermodynamics allows. Um, and that's it. Uh, and in fact, if you even take the equation I mentioned earlier for, for CCO, that was energy in minus energy out. Here, this is energy in minus energy out. So there is nothing, in fact, incompatible with this. And we see it doesn't lead to um, any change in composition. Um, OK, so that's the first example. The second example is that all our oxygen, for example, atoms, would be replaced by polonium. Um, so that's a, a totally legitimate uh, process that, uh, that can be uh, imagined. Um, within the context of the first law uh, of thermodynamics. Okay, so if you only say, well, what matters is the first law of thermodynamics, fair enough, um, then you can basically replace all oxygen uh, with uh, all uh, polonium and see how that goes. Um, so to be honest here, I'm not really able to tell what's going to happen, but what we know is that it's likely that the chemical potential of the polonium atom is going to be different. Um, in fact, here I should specify that uh, uh, that's just as a very, very simplified view of writing it because in principle, you would need a different chemical potential for each different kind of chemical bonding state the polonium will be in, okay, which is basically very many, okay? So, um, so please uh, do, do take this with a, a bag of salt the actual equation just for replacing uh, oxygen with polonium would be much more complicated than this, and in fact, uh, uncalculable uh, anyway. Uh, but the idea here is that you would get an internal energy change, uh, but then um, it would uh, uh, probably come from the different energy stored in the bonding energy, okay? Uh, so that's one example as well. And again, here, uh, there could be obviously a, a gain in mass, but actually it's not clear whether the energy is gained uh, out of this uh, because it depends on the chemical potentials uh, here, which are uncalculable, as I, as I just said. But that's something that is totally permitted by the first law of thermodynamics. Um, and then third, we can imagine that uh, our bodies um, actually uh, act as uh, some kind of uh, uh, freezing machine. So the way it would work is that somehow uh, we've got uh, some power that enables us to suck the heat from um, uh, our environment, and even if it's a cooler environment. Um, so here, for example, Q specifically would be the heat being absorbed from a colder uh, surrounding. Um, and basically, we are going to increase uh, with this uh, our internal energy. Uh, usually, you would get then out of this 
possibly because it's heat uh, you would get directly just a temperature increase you could get maybe some other uh, things related to chemical reactions as well uh, in terms of uh, energy stored in the in the bondings and, and so on uh, but the bottom line here um, is that as you as you may um, see um, here you've got just delta u is equal to q um, and we uh, and I said that you can absorb that from colder surrounding. Now the reason why uh, it's it's actually possible is because the first law of thermodynamics actually allows uh, heat to flow from cold uh, source to a hot one. Okay, there is no nothing that prevents it within the first law uh, of thermodynamics. Um, and so th the main uh, point that I want to make here is that the first law of thermodynamics is incredibly permissive. So here I've just given three examples where basically seco would not work and there is energy in and energy out. Um, uh, seco wouldn't work uh, and yet um, basically the first law would be perfectly fine. Okay. Uh, so that's one way we can look at it. Now, of course, people would say, well, but we know that the point is that uh, if you ingest food, then things are going to happen. Uh, well, uh, yes, but the point is that there is no reason to imagine food as being different from, um, um, you know, uh, well, one thing that is interesting is, uh, is, uh, is the alleged special case of water. Um, so water, indeed, you can excrete water um, uh, by, for example, playing with your electrolytes. Um, but the interesting bit here is that this is something that, that kind of we know. Um, now, imagining that energy, um, the energy content of, uh, the alleged energy content of uh, food uh, sources is a, a, a reliable way to determine um, um, whether we are going to reshape uh, our or change our body composition is basically as um, at least appears let's say uh, as naive if I may say as claiming that the only way to lose water is simply to be in a sauna right uh, that's exactly that that would be simply claiming that it's basically different between heat in and heat out uh, and then because we need to sweat in order to uh, to uh, regulate our temperature then essentially that's the only way to lose water um, so like totally uh, forgetting that obviously we need some time to go uh, uh, into toilet and whatever okay so th that that's really 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 very naive to re try to reduce what's going to happen to food as it comes in our body simply by uh, looking at energy uh, now, of course, it means that I kind of gave uh, part of, my, of an opinion on this. The only thing I'm saying is that it appears um, to, be, uh, to be naive. Again, I'm not necessarily saying this does not work or if there is no specific cases where it could work, but clearly, clearly, it does not come from the first law of thermodynamics on its own. Certainly not. So I think if people need to advocate for using the first law of thermodynamics, fair enough, but then they need to spell out really uh, what are the other uh, assumptions, principles, and whatnot that they are adding to it in order to claim uh, that SICO is a robust, uh, you know, law of nature. Okay, so that's kind of the idea. So I if you liked, please uh, don't hesitate to watch some of the other videos, um, and uh, and that's it. So see you later.